in the new NFL, do you, do you think you would have been more, more successful if you played uh, today with more of the read option in, in you know, college systems? Well, we never did the read option when I was playing. But we did a lot of things that used my versatility. Bootlegs, play action pass, quarterback draws, a few things like that um, that allowed my style of play to actually be implemented into a system. But to answer your question, yes, most definitely. I mean, you look at Aaron Rodgers, you look at Andrew Luck, uh, you talk about RG3 when healthy, uh, to Ben Roethlisberger when he does his thing. Uh, the lay of the land when it comes to quarterbacks now in the sense of how they need to play, they have to be mobile. So I would have fell right in real easily, uh, probably would have been drafted maybe in the first round maybe somewhere because a lot of mobile quarterbacks nowadays who are highly touted coming out of college have an opportunity to be a top pick in the game. So I was the 60th pick in the second round. That was good. Uh, but the way the game is nowadays, it's accepted and appreciated and uh, utilized a little different from a standpoint of confidence and not just using the talent, just to be using it. Um, if, you, if, you have, if you have to do a top five best quarterbacks of all time, who, who, who's on, who's on your all time? Rush? Who's on your mind? Good God almighty, you caught me off guard with that. <laughs> um... Obviously, Peyton Manning, Tom Brady, uh, Steve Young. Uh, I love Doug Williams. I loved Warren Moon uh, and Joe Montana. Well, Doug Williams, uh, Warren Moon, Steve Young, were, were those guys that you sort of studied? Or, or well, that's who I was raised. I was raised on watching yeah. Doug Williams, especially in a time in which the game wasn't acceptant of African-American quarterbacks. And, and, and it was a good thing to see him actually accomplish a feat. Let's just call it that. Uh, Warren Moon, I mean, you played Tecmo Bowl. You remember Warren Moon on Tecmo Bowl. Uh, he was about as good as he got. Uh, and he was right here in Houston. And, uh, I mean, he did it better than anyone, really. What, what, was it an injustice in a way that he had to go to CFL to sort of... Well, you know, everybody's, everyone's road traveled is a little different. You know, Tom Brady, six-rounder comes in because of injury to Drew Bledsoe, the rest is history. Uh, you look at Steve Young, USFL, right? Tampa Bay, USFL, however, whichever order, to sit behind Joe Montana and Steve Walsh off offense. Look at it now. One of the most efficient quarterbacks to ever play a game in the Hall of Famer. Um, you look at Doug Williams, he won a Super Bowl. Again, you look at Warren Moon, he never won a Super Bowl, but he's a Hall of Famer. Uh, I mentioned Tom Brady. Again, I mentioned Peyton Manning. I mean, Peyton Manning is Peyton Manning. So when you think of all the guys that I mentioned, and Joe Montana, you got to throw in there too, of course. Uh, he had Rathman and Roger Craig and Ronnie Lott, Jerry Rice, Taylor. Uh, so when you really start adding and putting it in perspective, you know, these guys were very special in their own right. So when you think of Doug Williams, when you think of Warren Moon, guys that had a different role, they were different in their own way, but these guys were extremely successful. Never is. Look, looking back on it, um, what would you say is your uh, most memorable Pittsburgh Steelers moment? Uh, Ooh, I had quite a few. I would say my entire 95 season was one that was very memorable. Playing wide receiver, a position I never played before. I'd never played wide receiver before, a wide receiver before in, in any league, full time, uh, and having a chance to be that dynamic. Uh, I remember a comeback route I threw to Yancey Bigman, Big Pen in Foxborough, was third and 15. He was running the route against Ty Law in the old stadium, not Gillette Stadium, but the old Foxborough Stadium. He ran a comeback and I threw it to a spot where only he could catch it. And he did the old Chris Carter, dead leg, dead arms, you know, kind of catch where he caught it. And he kept his arms straight out to where he wouldn't fumble on the ground or whatever. And we converted it, ended up throwing him a touchdown in the back of the end zone. And we ended up winning that game on the road, having home field advantage throughout the playoffs that year, 1997. So uh, that was one of the plays of many plays I had a chance to be a part of and, and had success playing and doing. So with saying that, my 95 year playing wide receiver next to Yancey Dickman, Andre Hastings, Ernie Mill, Charles Johnson, Neil O'Donnell was my quarterback, Damani Dawson was my center, Rod Woodson was our safety. Uh, I mean, should I keep going? I mean, it's Justin Strauslick was my offensive lineman. John Jackson was another one. Tom Newberry was another one. I mean, Bam Morris was, was my tailback. Eric Pegram was another one. Ray Seals was on a defensive line. Brenton Buck.
partner to LeVon Kirkland, Chad Brown, I mean, Cornell Lake, I mean, I could go smart, Willie Williams, uh, Darren Perry. You know, so that year, Coach Cower was the head coach. We went to the Super Bowl that year. I had a chance to play against prime time. So when you think about memorable moments, that year, Greg Lloyd, Kevin Green, Hall of Fame, Hall of Fame it was special. Is Rob Wilson the greatest safety of all time? I wouldn't say he's the greatest of all time, uh, but he was very good at what he did. To go from corner and playing safety, he was one of the first I thought that I saw do that. Well, he went from corner being really, really good to safety, having a chance to go to Baltimore and get the Super Bowl, and went to another one again. With He went to a Super Bowl with the Steelers. He won one with the Baltimore Ravens, went to another one with the Oakland Raiders, and now he's defensive secondary coach there with the Oakland Raiders. And also, he's a Hall of Famer. What was it like to play with the Bucks? Wheels on the bus go round and round. Uh, it was special, man. It was it was like watching that, uh, like it was HD television. Every time I handed the football off, I saw him run through the hole. As big as he was, he looked like a little small guy when he, he came down and having to shrink his body down somewhat to get through those holes. Jerome Bettis was special. A uh, special guy, too. Uh, not just the way he played, but the way he handled himself with his teammates. I think that took him over the top uh, because a lot of backs in the game are, are really good. There's only a few that can actually do it as long as he did and how he did it. And once he left the Rams and came to Pittsburgh and became a and, and walking in the, you know, in the footsteps of, of the Franco Harrisons of the world, I mean the Liars of the world, it was it was really magnificent. And, uh, another Hall of Famer. I was lucky to be around. Him. I'm, I'm just wondering when you when you went when you sort of split into uh, multiple roles. Was, was that? Um, like, were you willing to do, did you, was that your idea? Was that yeah, that was my idea you? because the team, we were injured. We had a lot of injuries, and I had to ask, could I help out a little bit? Because a lot of receivers were hurt, quarterbacks were hurt. And we were like two and four, three and four. And I was like, if I need to help, let me know. So Coach Carroll was like, sure. I said, as long as I can keep my number 10 and uh, I can have a chance to compete for the starting job as a quarterback, sure. It happened. Boom, the rest was history. Awesome.